Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Friday. And I'm back with a brand new episode of TGIF. We are spilling the tea and breaking down the biggest news and headlines in social media and in the world, Craig. Now sit back, relax, and get you something to drink because we're about to spill this hot tea. Please welcome brand strategist Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? <laughs> the figure skater is back. <laughs> what you got on today, Al? What's happening? What? what? What you wearing today? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's conservative. You been because you've been having your arms out and sheer sleeves and conductive <laughs> Not costume. sheer sleeves now. I do a lot. That's funky with the sheer, not me now. Oh, that wasn't sheer. It was like the same skin color. It was like a beige, just you. No, it was a. It was like a yeah, an off white sweater. Yeah, yeah, skin color. <laughs> okay we this is gonna be this type of show today it sure is okay y'all okay let me get my mind right there let me get my mind right please welcome multimedia personality talk show host funky Daniva. what's up q hey listen Al, don't be coming from my shit everybody ain't able all right listen <laughs> i've been going to my trainer for over a year i got this new body this new <laughs> mind this new mindset Okay, don't get mad now. <laughs> so, am I correct that nobody is drinking tonight? Uh, I'm back on the detox. No, oh. I'm not drinking tonight. I'll be at the <laughs> IV clinic tomorrow morning. That's only because I overdid it Thursday night. So, I'm like, I need a break. My liver needs a rest. What did you do on Oh, Thursday so you night? went out last night? I just, I had just had to. Thursday, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. When I went in, I'm sorry, Wednesday. See, I'm still. I'm still paying for it from Wednesday night. I went to the Jamaican restaurant at eight, um, got towed down messing with them damn Jew Makings. Okay, them, <laughs> all them rum punches had to mess me up. You know, the Jamaicans know how to party. And I uh, left my expensive ass oxtails in my trunk overnight. Oh no. Was hungry, didn't have no food in my house. So what I did, I kept my black ass to the parking garage and got my oxtails out of my trunk. I sure did. How long were in there? They was in there, but I didn't eat them, though, because the, the oxtails had a little twang to it. But I did eat cabbage, and I did eat the rice and the plants, and sure did. Okay. Well, you know what? I think your immune system is pretty strong after what, you know, all that. <laughs> I think you'll be okay. I think you have probably the strongest. Um, so we're not drinking tonight. Okay, I'm, I'm proud of us. Look at us evolving and glowing up, trying to keep our skin together. Hey, y'all, real quick, I just want to plug a, a show that I'm doing. It starts Monday, Couples Retreat. It's finally here. Uh, we shot it last summer, but um, yeah, Couples Retreat on VH1, 9 p.m., so check it out. There's been a lot of, the trailer's been pretty good. Have y'all had a chance to see it? I have, I have, but I want to know this. Is, and, and, and be real, is you and KJ on there giving the real, or did y'all just go to collect the check like everybody else be doing? So we went there to collect the check, and we said, hey, let's not really put it out there like that, and let's just kind of keep it surface. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about. But once we got there... AJ knows me and we've had conversations before. We talked talked in Ghana. There was no way around it. And she really didn't treat me like we're doing this on surface. So she was like, whatever y'all had planned, we're not going with that. So she actually really did dig deep. And if you I don't know if y'all saw, but I was really crying in the trailer. Like those are real t- I cried probably, I don't know how many times, but more than once. So it was So it let was me ask you this. Ago. This is my question. Cause you know, tell this television thing is very new for KJ, right? I mean, he's never been on television before, has never. he? Never. Never. So I just wonder, you know, how is he feeling about this whole? Is he does is he excited? Is he nervous? Is this he, one is he part vulnerable? He, he, KJ first of all is not a crier, so he you're not gonna get any tears from him. He probably cried once in his life when he was like a baby when he was born. That's, um, and that's part of our issues actually. Um, uh, he's actually regretting not being more reactionary on a one scene. He wishes he regrets not checking someone. Okay, and you'll it. see what I'm talking about when you see the show. So he's, I mean, he's like, you know, I don't so know. He's he cool. Said, he's cool with being on television and his personal life. Okay That's with very it. intimate, right? But, you know, um, it was, we were very honest. We were very honest on the show and we, we were exactly how y'all know us. So you'll see what happens. Um, we went deep though. We went really deep and uh, I wasn't, ex- I wasn't expecting it. I was emotionally exhausted when we came home because I, I left it all on the table and none of us really got to fake it. Well, maybe none of us really faked it. No, I'm going to say that was very real. Well, hopefully Nick, Nick Young. Hopefully by the time it go off, you still have a man child. Cause you know, <laughs> the reality TV be tearing up the people relationships. 
You know, for us, it, it didn't. But when we got back, it's about your follow through. Well, I was going to say, you don't know that yet. because it's Yeah, just, you got to wait to the show. There's some people in them comments and them Twitter. Yeah. You know, that, right. That's what be tearing people up. Right. And I don't know what he said on his one on one. And he doesn't know what I said on my one on one. And you don't know how it's going to read like, you know, we don't know. So we shall see. So couples are free this Monday on VH1. Thank you, Fox Soul, for letting me plug that real quick. Okay, moving on. Let's get into these hot topics. Earlier this week, we talked about Fat Joe's interview with Wendy Williams, where she said she will not watch Sherry Shepard's new talk show. Sherry responded by saying, I'm truly concerned for her because I don't feel like there's anybody over there protecting her. Now, following Sherry's calls for prayers for Wendy, Wendy told Entertainment Tonight, I have tons of support around me and I'm working on projects. She added, I would love to have the chance to actually sit down in, uh, with Sherry Shepard and meet and speak to her. What are your thoughts on po- the possibility of Wendy and Sherry having a conversation and maybe even on her show? Well, their show, Sherry show. Al, what do you think? This sounds just doesn't sound right to me. Something about this is just doesn't it's, it's just weird i'm i'm confused why would she want to have a sit down with sherry shepherd on the old wendy williams show i i'm 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 just not understanding this press here um it sounds like to me that uh wendy williams team is trying to clean up that fat joe interview and the back and forth between wendy and well well you know the back and forth that sherry shared about wendy and wendy shared about sherry um, because if those two women wanted to talk, they can pick up the phone and call each other. Like Norman knows both of them, got both of their numbers. He can coordinate that. The managers can, the publicists can, the agents can. I, I just don't understand what would be the purpose of those two sitting down and what would they be talking about? For me, I think the first thing that needs to happen for Wendy and her team and her coming back, whether it's a different show or somewhere, number one, we need to work on Wendy getting her money right. And getting her getting that that Wells Fargo block off. And I think the best way to make that happen is Wendy needs to stop talking because the more she talks, the more she seems like she is not in control and does need a conservatorship in order to handle her funds. That's number one. Number two, I think if you're really on Wendy's team, they need to also stop her from talking and, and doing press because if she's got a deal coming down the pipe, like they need to wait till it's sealed and signed before she starts talking and sitting down with people because i just feel like the more she talks the more she seems unstable to us and who wants to close a deal with someone that's unstable mentally or physically right like why would you invest a hundred million dollars and we've noticed from um hollywood unlocked we talked you remember i mentioned what months ago that there was a podcast on the deal on the table of worth a hundred million dollars who's going to invest a hundred million dollars in someone who's not mentally and physically stable so that's number two I don't that know. interview I just, I, that interview helped sherry shepherd show i it's it's it you know it will be huge ratings for sherry shepherd's show but i i, I agree with you i don't think it'll be beneficial yeah, for, when it'll be good for her out. q what right. do you think about this well, first, y'all making a very dangerous assumption, and that's the assumption that she wants to do a sit down on camera interview on Sherry's show. She just said sit down and talk to Sherry. That could mean on the telephone. That could mean via text message. To Al's point, Norman or Suzanne can make that happen. But the reality of the situation is Sherry Shepard benefits not one iota of anything talking to damn Wendy Williams. Girl, I already got your job. I already got your time <laughs> slot. And they have gone and retrofitted your time slot to fit me. <laughs> So what I need to sit down and talk to you about? No, right. to Al's point, you need to go sit down with your therapist and you need to go sit down with Wells Fargo. <laughs> to get your money on sold up or whatever. Or you whatever. don't think that'll be big for ratings to see these two? Because people assume that there's beef. Well, like, I, the I, I, think, I think it would be big for ratings, but Wendy Williams is not that big of a person to give Sherry Shepard that. I would never sit right. down on nobody's show who essentially took my dog Look on my spot. Car. I wouldn't either. And I mean, who's going to do Wendy ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? And then, too, if Wendy did agree to come on that show, they better damn pre-record it because if she was anything like me, she's going to get on there and say hi and play all nice in the beginning and then show her ass and walk off. You know what I'm saying? He's going to do like how Amorosa did her on the show. Exactly. Yeah. Like what would honestly, Claudia, if you if you were in that situation, what would you talk about? Who would interview you? Who? 
you you would have to go in there with the intention of of having your moment. Like you were probably gonna go read, like you know, nice right. nasty. Yeah, and then even so, that still benefits Sherry because everybody will watch. I mean, that that episode would get more than Whitney Houston sitting down with Diane Sawyer. And I'm not going to gift you that because low key. And although Sherry had absolutely nothing to do with Wendy being replaced, it's just human to feel slightly bitter or, right. or, or have some type of negative emotions about the B-I-T-C-H that's in your spot. That's why I feel like people need to be a little bit easier on Wendy about whatever what she says right now. If she is sick, A, B, can you imagine how that feels like the Wendy Williams show is being replaced with Sherry, who was your friend? You can't feel good about that. As much as that's your girl, you can't be happy. That's got to be hard. That's going to be heartbreaking. All right, y'all. We will see. I'm sure this is not the last we'll be talking about this. All right. It seems like Black China is ready to cleanse her life after losing emotion to uh, disqualify the judge who presided over her defamation trial with the Kardashians. Now, after her loss, China posted a video of her being baptized for her birthday. Let's take a look. And in the name of the Holy Ghost. Funky, I'm going to start with you. Are you in support of Black China making this kind of change in her life and getting baptized to signify it? You would come to me. Listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious. I, 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 I am forever in support of anyone who is moving on a path to betterness. Okay, period, hard stop. Um, but I didn't know you could turn a hoe into a deaconess. Hey! Okay. Um, and I also was completely, I, I don't know, there's just something about doing this for social media um, that just got me not buying it. Like, that's just such a personal thing, baptism and stuff. And it just feels like you're doing it for personal gain, to gain some type of sympathy and to change the narrative. But we see you sneaking with the deacon. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I ain't buying it. Al, clean this up, please. Uh, I, well, you know, <clears throat> this was really nice to see, actually. Um, she and her mother have gone through so much. Baptism, you guys you guys know that I, I am a, a Christian. Um, Hold up. No, we did not know you're a Christian. <laughs> clearly, I am a Christian. I clearly, have spoke about it. Mr. <laughs> Orgy, group sex. Show. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, you two, you two, that's a different story. But anyway, seriously, I think baptism is really serious. Um, I thought it was beautiful to watch anybody that gives their life to Christ and decides to to do a rebirth. It's just it's just a huge, huge moment. I really support Black China if if she if this is real, if this is something that she's taking serious, because, you know, we're used to Black China being on the blogs two and three times a week and they weren't very Christian like or, or Christ-like um, reasons or, or, or actions that put her in those blogs. So I'm now all she's gonna for- Now she's going to be in the Witness Watchtower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for her accepting Christ in her life and starting new. And, I, and I'll support that. And I hope she just sticks to it. And I hope she's really, really serious about this. Because the last thing you want to do is be playing with the Lord. Well, Al, since you're such a devout Christian, can you please take us a break with maybe a word from the good book for Black China and maybe give us some words of encouragement to, to start on her journey, Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Al? Do you have anything words, to say? Words of encouragement. So how about I share with you what the baptism, what baptism represents? No, no, we don't got that much time. We need a word from Pastor Al. <laughs> I'm not a pastor. Well, what I'm a good Christian. About? You're like you know how they do in the South and Southern Bell, they kind of give a good, nice little nasty read or a little a little passage. No, no lines for her. You don't know none of the song. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lead not unto thy own understanding. <laughs> like what? How many? How many? You thou shalt not. What? What do you want? And what oh. book is that? See, so you ain't even did it. Al don't go to church for real because he was. I, like, I, he was I definitely go to church. Oh, what are you talking about? Seven. He Try was out there, cast the first stone. That's what, that's <laughs> what you're supposed to say. You know what? We're going to take a quick commercial break, but right after this, we're going to talk about Pastor Jamal Bryant and uh -oh. he's not so nice words he had to say about He ain't no real pastor either. <laughs> Y'all go to Sam Church, Al? I, listen, I've been a new birth. I like Okay, okay, okay. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with all this Christianity when we return. 
Welcome back to TGIF with myself, Funky Dineva, and Pastor Al. Pastor Al, we have a few comments for you in the chat. They like, hurry up. Uh, Stevie Ray says, hurry up, Pastor Al. Tiffany Bowes, come on, Al. They was rooting for you to give a scripture. <laughs> uh, BJ Williams says, leave Al alone, Claudia. Um, uh, Miss King Ryder, Deacon Al, they call you Deacon Al, Reverend Al. They said, Pastor Rome. Yeah, they're, they're, they they like that. They said, Al said, God is good. God is great. B. Jones said that. So they, they try to help you out there. All right, y'all. Um, some interesting comments uh, regarding the uh, the Black China story. Um, this, let me read this one right here real quick. Uh, Unique H says, it's funny how people go so hard on women like her, but don't have no concerns with whores like Nick Cannon. That's their word, not us. And Funky, you said that's interesting, right? It is interesting. So, you know, women like her, that's an acknowledgement of what type of woman she is, correct? Period, mm-hmm. hard, stop. But you're right. There is a double standard in this country. And there, right. there's a double standard in, there's a, we, we live in a patriarchal society. Don't make it right, don't make it wrong. People are just more desensitized to when men do it. And, and, and will that change in our lifetime? Probably not. Um, that being said, you got to play with the hand that you dealt. And unfortunately, in some sense, some situations, from a public opinion perspective, women can't do what men do. Don't yeah. make it right. Don't make it fair. I agree that it's not, but it just is what it is. Yeah, mm. the judgment is one thousand percent different. We have futures. We have we have Nick. We have a lot of guys that are just having these broken families all over the place. And if we know of two or three celebrities that one woman has been with, she's deemed a whore. A whore. Yep. She's she's damaged goods. Yeah. Okay, well, speaking of damaged goods, in a recent service, Pastor Jamal Bryant asked his congregation a very important question about Kevin Samuels. Brian, oh wow, Brian asked, how could a man say that you do not have the level of attraction of a high-powered man when that man got to get a GoFundMe for his funeral? What are your thoughts on Bryant's question? Al, you've been to Pastor Bryant's church, so what, what do you say about what he's saying, and do you agree with him? Um, I think if you if you know him, I would probably have to know the context because he is a he's a crap talker now, um, but he's still anointed. Uh, the, the man is a is a is a really good pastor, and that leadership that he's providing at New Birth down in Atlanta is amazing. But it, just from the surface, whether you know someone took this out of context or not, it does not come across very well i don't think that's his position to make that comparison and, and definitely not coming from the pulpit okay uh q do you have a similar thought or what do you think that man ain't no more damn anointed in them dirty shoes i got at the damn though uh <laughs> listen i 100 agree with what jamal bryant said but the reality of the situation is when it comes to man and woman affairs and conversations on adultery and cheating and what qualifies a wife or qualifies a girlfriend that's probably a conversation that jamal bryant should not have voluntarily entered considering his womanizing past ways the mm-hmm. all the multiple babies out uh, created out of affairs wedlock deceit in every doggone thing else. Why, you know what I'm saying? Why, here it is, you trying to be the trendy pastor and trying to preach a sermon on what's hot in the blogs with all the things that's going on in people's life. That Sunday, your ass probably should have did a prosperity sermon considering how the hell inflation and rent eating everybody up and it's a lack of damn chicken wings in the damn grocery store. We need, what did Jesus do with the loaf of bread and the fish? He had two fish and one loaf of bread and fed. How many people have? I didn't go to Bible school. I was a heathen. 12 <laughs> people or 200 people. However the hell many people he fed with the two fishes and the loaf of bread, considering this chicken wing shortage, his ass should have been teaching prosperity and should have stayed up at the relationship, love, life, in the 411 relationship area with Kevin Samuels. That's all I'm saying. I think uh, what Pastor Bryant was doing was pandering to the women in the congregation right. to make them feel good about that. I mean, we don't really know Kevin Samuel's um, financial situation. Al, you said he made like $3 million on YouTube. Then uh, Lavender Sunset says, Lavender Sunset says, this new footage with Kevin having a leaky BMW and getting chewed out by his landlord about his rented room. We don't know what his money was. Uh, someone said that that GoFundMe is fake. There's just so much out right now that we don't know what's what. So let's just wait so we can find out. I do. But I, I do think that Pastor Bryant was definitely pandering to the women in his car. And, and they are there to entertain. I look at pastors like entertainment. I'm sorry. I'm not an atheist. Someone asked me. But it felt it feels like sometimes you're just, you know, 
like you said, you get on the trendy topics and people be like, I felt that. Yeah, because you've been hearing about the story all week. So it's relatable. Right. I just feel like he's he's gone. Like he can't even defend himself. I just don't think a pastor should be talking from his pulpit about someone um, after they're dead and gone. You know, that's just my. Do y'all really feel like that? Like people, once they die, you can't say anything negative about I them? I don't. I don't either. Don't. You, you don't get to be hell on earth and then all of a sudden people got to extend you so much grace and now everything that you ever did in your life and how I felt about you before you died is now off limits for me to talk about. That is a bunch of BS. That's some mess y'all grandma told y'all. If you really sit, th- sit down and think through it for yourself, you will realize that rationally and logically it does not make sense. Now, I'm not I talking about that. talking bad. I'm talking about you can't speak on a man's situation. You don't know that man's situation. That man's not here to defend himself to tell you if he had money in his account or not. We don't know if the GoFund account is real or not. The narrative is just a negative narrative because he was negative about black women. You can't talk nasty and spew ugly uglities from the pulpit when you don't know the facts and that dude's not here to defend himself. It's but just Jamal not godlike. Period. Jamal, Jamal was talking about something that we can all agree on about how do you let somebody like Kevin Sam to tell you anything about yourself? I don't need, I don't think he was talking about his finances. Was yes, it? he did. He said oh. when he only when he died with a thousand dollars in his bank account or something like that and not able to pay for his funeral with well, a GoFundMe account. You got like that's just inappropriate coming from the yeah, pulpit. That's gossip. That's gossip. That's that's yeah. That's, that's inappropriate. That's the blog. But like, are we gonna sit here and act like the church isn't all the way? There's not a ton of gossip going on. A bunch of hip- a bunch of hypocrisy going on. Not all. But let's not sit here and be fake news, right? And act like it's 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 conducted the way it is. Because a lot of churches have people messing with each other's husbands and wives, and sometimes messing with the pastors. And it's a lot of judgment and a lot of hypocrisy going on. And holier than thou on Sunday when y'all was getting in the other six days of the week so i just feel like people are just very fake and they say one thing they do another and that's in the church outside the church kevin samuels pastor bryant and all those in between that's not <laughs> I, well, you, know, you want to just throw them all away I, I'm with it you. Was so like, correct, correct me if i'm wrong you know every time pastors get caught doing something people always want to say they want to revert to this oh well the flesh and you know he's he might be the pastor but he's still a man am i wrong for feeling like the pastors in my church leadership should have a bit more pulled upness than the average person. Like if I'm somebody who's struggling with finding my moral compass, shouldn't my pastor be the person that I should be able to mimic and model or or am I putting too much on them? Yeah, you're putting too much on it. It shouldn't be one person. You you shouldn't put any any type of idolship on a human being because human beings fall short, Q, all the time. A pastor is human. It shouldn't be one person. It should be your tribe. It needs to be your pastor. It needs to be your parents. It needs to be your sisters and your brothers, your aunts and your uncles. It needs to be your teachers. It needs to be your mentors. You can't lay all your moral camp compass on just the church that's unfair not only to the church that's unfair to you yourself you can't do that and i think that is the misinterpretation and the breakdown when we talk about the black church the black church is not where you solve all your problems it's a place that you go to learn to be better if there's something that you're working on and to save your soul it's not to solve all your moral compass problems that sounds good, Al, but I think we all know the black church acts in that capacity. People will not go to the doctors and they will go to church and pray. They will not figure the things out on their own because they'll say, I'll just pray about it. And yes, one man does have all that power in all too many of these churches. That's why there's, mm, listen, I, I think, I, I, I think, I think, my think. Point. let me finish, let me finish. Mm. I just feel like a lot, the, the, the organized religion has hijacked real faith, organized religion and man's greed. Now, I am I am very spiritual. I pray when I'm home by myself, but I, I get uneasy with some of these churches. And this is probably a two part series that we could do on this right here. But I just feel like it's been hijacked by a lot of um, imperfect beings because man is imperfect. And you see people taking advantage of the money and having adulterous affairs. We're talking about one right now. 
You know what I'm saying? So they sh- it should. You're right. It shouldn't be the place that we put think, all that on one man, I, but we do. We do. I think it's fair that that we can agree to disagree, right? Because all churches are not the same. Um, your experience is not my experience. Um, humans are humans. I don't look at my pastor. I look at my pastor as a spiritual coach. I don't look at him as a as a spiritual like God. Like he's not going to do ever do anything wrong. He's not going to misstep. He's human. I go and I find the good and leave the bad. That's just how I was taught That's because I came from a tribe that what? That's how all church people do. They cherry pick. I don't think well, it's unre- I don't think it's unreasonable for there to be an expectation that my pastor is not delving in internet gossip in the pulpit. I don't think. Oh no, a- no, I agree with that. I agree with that. But it depends. It depends. Like, what was the context? I think I would like to know the context of it. Did he create an entire sermon around that? I think that that, like I said before, it doesn't belong in a pulpit. But I don't think you guys, you guys, from what I hear, you're grouping all churches under one umbrella, and it's simply not fair. I'm not grouping all churches under one umbrella. I'm just saying that there is a through line with all too many churches between the the, the sexual abuse, the affairs. There's a lot. It's not like a, an odd thing where it's like, oh, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. It's becoming where we're almost used to it. You know, you know, what? I think this is a good conversation. I'm glad we we kind of got off the celebrity thing and had a conversation about this. I think we can have more conversations about this in the future. <laughs> Funky. Um I'm going to have an assignment, some homework for us. I think we should go to church. We don't have to go together and come back and talk about our experiences. How about that? No. You know, I, I, you know what? I have not been in so long. I would love some good musical theater. So, you know. <laughs> you guys. All right, child, I'm you know what? pray for both of you. You know what? This is a perfect time, Al, to lead us in prayer. We're going to take a quick <laughs> commercial break. I'm not mocking the Lord. I would love to, when we go to commercial break, pray for Funky and I to get our spirit and center together. Is that what I'm saying? All right. Okay, we'll take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with more tea. Thank God it's Friday. Oh Our proper goodness. name is after this. Welcome back to tea, Jeff. Wow, I'm looking at some of the comments in the chat. They are going hard. We have both sides in the chat list. I'm going to leave it at that. Spirited debate. Uh, all right, y'all. Um, welcome back. Now, we all know how important sleep is to our overall wellness. Well, let me tell you about Ghost Bed, the best beds in the game. Ghost Bed is made by Nature Sleep, an industry leader in, ma- in the mattress space since 2001. 2001. Now, every Ghost Bed product from their mattresses to their sheets and pillows is designed with cooling features. So it's perfect if you sleep warm. Now, shipping is free and fast. Most orders ship within 24 hours. Then you can try out your mattress for 101 nights with guaranteed money back. And even if you get an industry-leading warranty for up to 25 years. Now, right now, GhostBed is offering our listeners 40% off GhostBed bundles where you get a mattress and adjustable base or 30% off a mattress and two free luxury pillows. I'm so excited because my ghost bed products are on the way and I can't wait to try them out. Now to find your perfect mattress, use promo code T at ghostbed.com slash T. Now you don't, you don't want to miss out on these savings. That's promo code T at ghostbed.com slash T. We're taking a quick commercial break and we'll be back with all the tea when we return. Welcome back to TGIF. Let's get into this young thug story. Now, he's been named in a sweeping 56 count gang indictment following a rapper Gunna. A fellow rapper Gunna is named uh, as an alleged associate as well. 27 others are also included. Now, according to the 88 page indictment filed in Georgia's Fulton County, lyrics from some of the thugs popular songs were used as examples of overacts, some of which constitute racketeering. Now, Young Thug is allegedly the co-founder of the street gang YSL, who are alleged to have committed multiple murders, shootings, and carjackings over roughly a decade and promoted their activities in songs and on social media. Now, the news started a debate on social media about whether it makes sense to use lyrics, song lyrics, as evidence to indict someone in a gang indictment. All right, fellas, I want to ask you, what are your thoughts on the story? And is it fair to indict someone based on song lyrics? What happened to freedom of speech? Al, let's start with you. Well, you know, I I started reading the 88 page indictment. And let me tell you what makes this so interesting, Claudia. Um, The district attorney, that woman is no joke. Fulton County's not playing around with these rappers. Um, She went on Clubhouse. 
She pulled evidence from Clubhouse conversations. She pulled evidence from Instagram posts. She pulled evidence from Twitter uh, posts. She pulled evidence from texts. She pulled evidence from um, the videos, the music videos, and their lyrics, and paste and pieced them all together to various times in Fulton County or in the state of Georgia in which the things happen. So my thing is, when are these rappers, especially the young new rappers, because the, the young new rappers are so authentic. <laughs> and I think that's why we're in this situation that we're in. It's not like the old school rappers who a lot of them rapped about what they saw or what they thought. These guys are actually rapping about their lives. But these guys got to know that nowadays that's basically you snitching on yourself because the police and the lawyers and the, the district attorneys are using all of that evidence to use against you. So young, young rappers and young guys in the game, you just got to be a little bit smarter on how you share your story because they are taking it all as evidence to put you some of them lifetime in prison okay thank you for that q what do you think well to add to, to add, answer your question what about freedom of speech freedom of speech ain't free number one number two let's not mislead the people i don't want y'all soulmates to think that the only evidence they got off of instagram social media clubhouse so on and so forth they use that to corroborate and help right. undergird other evidence that they That's had right. and lastly let's remember the rico app was created partially uh in collusion with uh rudy mayor former mayor rudy giuliani and this is how they took the mob down all right the, the italian mob in new york back in the day using the rico act those of y'all who participate in organized crime, they don't, if they can't get you on murder, if they can't get you on drug charges, they will get your ass on racketeering. All right, racketeering, That's for right. those of y'all that don't know, it's a, a more blanket way to, call, to, to string a common thread through a whole bunch of little crimes or petty crimes, or not even right. so much petty crime, to create the big picture. So moral of the story, don't participate in organized crime especially <laughs> when you're legit you got a music hustle you you're making millions but y'all right. always feel this need to go back to the hood and keep it real because i'm a real i'm real i ain't even i ain't leaving the hood all right, well, yeah. or or Q, you know, I know this is really bad. You guys, I'm not condoning violence, but you know, the RICO law and the RICO Act is only in seven states in the United States out of 50. It's only in seven. So unfortunately for these guys, Georgia happens to be one of the seven states and they're using that racketeering and RICO Act to take them down. Maybe they need to move to a different state if they're not going to change their ways. Go you to know, Montana. we clearly have a sickness. And we all say society, I'm not going to say it's a black or white thing because we got Takashi 669 doing the same thing. We cannot, first of all, there's no shame anymore. And again, race to the bottom. Before rappers would talk about the stuff that they saw they don't want to do. They would talk about the crackheads. Then they start mm. talking about how they're doing all the drugs. Now they're bragging about murder and crimes in their songs. You know, once upon a time, there was suburban kids that were rapping in, in, the, in the studio. And they were lying. They were just like making up stories. But now you're putting actual real stuff in there that's going to corroborate the stuff that you really did do. They do have evidence of. I don't get this. Like, I don't get where we are as a people. People are shooting people on live. They're showing off illegal guns on their Instagrams. Everyone's so thirsty for attention to the point where you're doing 25 to life. And right. be, you get, you're making it so easy. The police say, investigators, never has it been so easy than it is now. They don't have to do half the work they used to do, the groundwork. They can just go on Instagram and see you dumb, dumb folks and, bragging about the crimes you did and just connect the dots. Right, Claudia. And, you know, let's just bring this full circle. I don't know how real it is, but do you remember the the social media we saw on Instagram where there was this young girl on her prom night? She had a firearm. And she, you remember a lot of kids were posting their prom nights and they had guns in their arms. So the one girl, they did a follow-up, the school, the college that she had gotten a scholarship at rescinded her scholarship because on her social media, she was posting um, that she had, you know, had a firearm. So, you know, I just think that we got to be a little bit more smarter and careful about our flexing and our flossing on the Internet and on Instagram for likes, because it could actually ruin your life. 
And you ain't getting no job. You know how many people are missing out on, on, on life-changing careers because you got put all this stankness on social media and it's there forever? All right, y'all, moving on. In an interview with people, Zaya Wade opened up about how she has been impacted by hurtful social media comments about her appearance after she came out as transgender in 2020. Zaya said, as a trans person, once I came out, there were a lot of hateful comments about how I should grow my hair out long or fit into a, a certain version of femininity, even though that is not true at all. She added, that kind of advice is just trying to break you, but don't let it. Zaya also said she leans on her family for advice and talked about the important lesson she learned from her stepmother, Gabrielle Union, that not everyone in the world and in the media is going to be truthful about what you look like. Uh, Al, what are your thoughts on Zaya's transparency and what she's saying? You know, I have mixed emotions here. First of all, the things that the people were saying about that young lady and, and the ways was just despicable. It was wrong. It was completely wrong what they were saying. You know, I've been very supportive of the Wades and especially how Dwayne Wade is, is taking on his daughter uh, and the trans community and, and, and raising a transgender child and being very forthright and transparent about it. I think I, I still applaud the Wades for doing that. But I got a problem with a 14 year old on Instagram. And I and I, I don't know, maybe I'm just, just, maybe I'm telling my age, but, and I understand Instagram has a rule and a law that you, you know, that you have to be a minimum of 13. I have always been one to say that that number should be 15. But 14 year old Zania, she should not be on the internet because these comments and the way people speak and tr and talk about you it's just despicable and it could really crush your your self-confidence shit i'm oh sorry i'm 50 and when i read some of these comments it 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 like cuts and not and this is from people that you don't even know can you imagine what they're saying about this young lady as as she leads the charge of transgender girls and, and transgender boys, can you imagine what some of those comments are? I just feel like emotionally and mentally, she should not have access to it and she should not be reading it. I think her story and her personal business and, uh, and all of this, we shouldn't even know about it right now until right. she's 16, 17, 18 years old. Right. It's become, it feels, I'm gonna say it, Gimmicky. it feels very cloudy. It feels very attention seeking. It feels very, I'm just being an advocate and supporting my daughter. What do you think was going to happen, Gabrielle? You got dragged through the blog so many times. Dwayne's got dragged through the blog. We all have been dragged. You know better. So then you put this, your, your daughter out there, your stepdaughter out there, and then it's like, oh, my God, they're just being mean. Humans are going to human. People are, we're in a horrible place right now. I don't think we should be in her business like this. We shouldn't even right. know that she's transgender at 13 or 14. In my personal opinion, Q, I don't know if you agree, agree with me, but what are your thoughts on this story? So, you know, for, for me, I, I just want to give this story a little bit of depth. And I think that the hateful messages that she's gotten had less to do with her being trans and more to do with her being a celebrity. You can switch out Zaya Wade for anybody who has the level of visibility that she has, and they will all have a story of receding, receiving super negative comments about their appearance, about their life, and about their choices. So Zaya, I don't want you to think this is solely because you're trans. It's probably a little extra because you're trans, but it's not solely because you're trans. It's just the cost of being fame. And because you are a daughter of the LGBTQ family, I'm going to tell you what I always tell people who ask me about fame and how I deal with it. Suck it up. You've been thrust into in a very adult world and your family and you seem to like it and want more of it. Suck it up. You live a more privileged life than most people will ever. And it comes with the cost, baby. This is the cost. And welcome to the world. One thousand percent. You can go on any popular blog site. And if any one of us that's recognizable, even kind of recognizable, puts a positive comment on a story. Thank There's you. been people with, uh, I'll say, she looks great. There'd be a whole bunch of comments uh, focusing. Why you, what are, you, are you saying the other person doesn't look good either? Like they'll find something negative to say. So why even put your, you have two celebrity parents that knew better. You knew better. It's your job to protect. I'd be like, uh, no daughter of mine, especially going through this, is going to be put out there. They're not going to be kind. Everyone's not going to be kind. Yeah. But now that you're here, baby, 
you, you, I hate that you have to learn this lesson at 14, but the lesson is suck it up. Welcome to the world. That and part. again, I, I leave you with, you live a very privileged life. One that most people will ever dream about, baby. And it has a cost. This is part of the cost. And I also hate, before we go to commercial, she's really only identified for being trans. We don't know if you are an athlete or how you are in school, your personality. We only know you about for, for trans. And I think that's unfair to just, like your your whole existence is just pinned on this. That's a lot of pressure for a fourteen year old. All right, y'all, great co- great conversation. Quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about a, a transgender man getting a uterus transplant and how people are tripping on that. They are not happy. We'll be right back with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. My apologies, I confused the story that we'll be doing on Wednesday about the uterus transplant. So. Forgive me, I got ahead of myself. All right, y'all, let's get into this other story about the um, trans community. Calvin Klein is facing backlash for featuring a pregnant trans man in their latest campaign in honor of Mother's Day. The campaign featured a series of photos of a transgender couple. CK captioned the Instagram slide today in support of women and mothers all over the world. We're spotlighting the realities of new families. The pregnant trans man posed alongside his transgender girlfriend wearing the brand signature underwear. The trans man didn't shy away from showing his baby bump in the pictures. He also says, we can reproduce biologically or from the heart. Our role in the world is to love and be loved. Al, what are your thoughts on this campaign? Well, you know, Calvin Klein, it's just, you know, he's he he's he's a legacy of controversy when it comes to his ads. Um, I never forget in 92 when Kate Moss went topless. Remember when she was 17 and she did that topless Calvin <laughs> Klein um, ad? Uh, with Mark Wahlberg, <clears throat> that was controversial in '92. You know, now it's not. But the big controversy was when he did the jeans ad in '95, when the federal government actually, you know, did an investigation on child pornography on the set of that photo shoot. So Calvin Klein is is definitely his brand has always teetered on the the verge of sexy, or uh, the fence of sexy and inappropriate. Um, but I think this is just the sign of the times. This one is definitely controversial. A lot of people don't like it. The company is saying they're standing in inclusivity space, and this is how they do it. And, hey, you either like it or you love it. But one thing we do know about the Calvin Klein brand is that they've always been pushing the needle. They've always uh, used their their uh, branding and ads to teach and to expand our minds and our thoughts as it relates to sexuality. And this is no different. You, what do you think about this story? You know, I'm in a very weird space right now because it's one of those, Q, do you just keep it cute and pass? You know, yeah. just say something cute. Right. Or do you um, really delve into what you honestly feel? Right. Same. Um, let's go. Um, I'm very uncomfortable with this, right? And it, um, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with it because there are some things that I don't understand. And I think overall this ad and more so the pregnant trans man, in my opinion, undermines everything that so far I thought I knew about being trans. From my understanding, and I hear a lot of people say, oh, you know, I, 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 I am, a, I am a, 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 a boy trapped in the wrong body or I am a female trapped in the wrong body. So from the, and I have the psyche of a man, but the woman body and vice versa. So my thing is, if you are telling me that you are a man trapped in a woman's body, then it's confusing me that you even have interest in carrying a baby. What further bothers me, and I don't care if you choose to, I'm just trying to help you out here and trying to understand how to be a better advocate because if you are a man, yet you are choosing because you have the luxury of still having a uterus to then have a baby, then it lends itself to when people say being trans is a choice, being gay is a choice. You see what I'm saying? Because Uh you're now cherry picking what parts of what benefits you best 
part of my ignorance and I may be saying it wrong, but if you're going to, if you're a man and you're trying to get us to believe and respect you as a man, then I'm going to need you to be a man mm -hmm. for, for, for me uh, uh, until some of my trans friends or the advocates can, 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 can better help me understand and wrap my head around it. But that, that's how I feel off top. Cardi, I, 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 yeah, no, I was going to ask you, what, what do you feel? Because I, I think we talked about this on another show and I wanted to share what someone inboxed me, but go ahead, Claudia. How do you, what, what are your thoughts around it? I feel like I'm in a no win situation, lose, lose situation, but I'm going to speak from my heart as a woman. It makes me sad. It makes me sad. It makes me sad. Um, it does feel like cherry picking. It does feel like picking and choosing when it's convenient to you to like use your power that you can be, you know, you can reproduce as a woman, but you don't want to be, you don't want this. You don't feel like this is your thing, but then you go use that magical thing that you were blessed with to be a mom. And it's very confusing. And then we get like murdered on social media. If you say it wrong, it is extremely confusing. And it's just like better to just like not even say anything about it anymore because someone's going to get offended. The, the goalpost gets moved every single week. And I don't know what I can say, you know, what it's, I, I honestly, I'm going to just be as a woman. Sometimes it feels like, and then again, it feels like we're, we're being kind of like marginalized, pushed to the side. You know, I don't, I don't know. I, I have multiple feelings about it. But, uh, but then again, I also want the trans folks to feel included because I am empathetic and I am sympathetic and I do understand what that feels like. And there's a comment that um, Edward Truth says, the same way y'all be wanting to see Black people in ads, that could be how trans people feel. Oh, of course. And there yeah. should be inclusion. But I, the message is so confusing now that I don't even know what it do. I don't I don't even know what I'm supposed to say or feel or I don't know. I'm confused. So <clears throat> I, had... I, I am open. I, I listen, I am so open to education, dialogue, and I'm not saying this to be insensitive. And if I have it wrong, please correct me. But what's confusing me is you are telling me you are a trans man and you want me to treat you with all the love, liberty, and respect of essentially cisgender men. Mm -hmm. Then for me, I'm going to need you to conduct yourself as a man and not go get pregnant and if i'm wrong for that and if that's ignorant please educate me but i i just don't i just don't see how you can want the world to receive you as a man and you carrying a baby and then remember the one that um the tra um the trans man mm -hmm. that gave birth and didn't want to be called a mom. Didn't want to be called a mom. Mother. Yeah, and yeah. Like, so uh, to me, that's mock making a mockery of like I'm just like yo, that's a blood. Uh, right. So let that. me let me let me let me share real quick because I think that was the time that someone inboxed me to help me understand. So the particular trans man that inboxed me said that as a trans couple, when you still want to have a kid that these are the options in therapy when they go to therapy the, this particular trans uh man that hit me up is in therapy with their with their uh with their mate the person that they're married to and in therapy they talk about with the doctor their options as it relates to expanding their family and some of the options that are shared is this one that we're seeing in this campaign that the two of them because one is biologically a man and one is biologically a woman if they wanted to reproduce as a married couple that they have the option to have sex with each other and impregnate each other in the opposite gender and that made sense to me that they were actually seeking guidance and um you know like coach through this process because a lot of trans people are also still figuring it out how to be trans and how to live their best life and how to reproduce and what does their family look like because their family unit is already not traditional so in order for them to to procreate it has to be non-traditional so with that in mind i have learned to think about this whole process 
or this whole concept a little bit different? Uh, Asia Andrea says exactly. Call it what it is. We've gone too far. D. Meech says, how can you call yourself a sir if you got a baby in your stomach? Please educate me if I'm wrong. I think there's a lot of people that are just afraid to say, I don't get it. I don't understand. This is confusing. Right. And there's a lot of people in the chat saying this is wrong. There's a lot of people in the chat saying you don't understand what it feels like. And you should be, you know, we have a long way to go. I think that's something we can all agree on. Listen, we're going to play a game tonight, but we don't have time. I want you all to have a fantastic weekend um, and, and stay out of trouble. Be good. So you can see all back here on Wednesday. Um, yeah. All right. Stick around. Thank you for watching TGIF. And thank you for all the comments in the chat. Make sure you watch the replay tomorrow. Uh, right here on YouTube. Y'all gonna have a good weekend. Who's next? Have an excellent weekend, honey. Who's up next? Look around. The house is coming up next, and we will see you back here on Wednesday. Y'all take care. Have a good one. Have a couple of drinks for me. Y'all know I'm starting my detox back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a good night, soulmate. Bye, soulmate.